Welcome back, family. Mangi, How are you doing? Mangi M. Tati. Mangi Adam. And this is Young, Melanated, and Mary. Um, today's episode is going to be about intimacy within your relationship and um, different ways that you can really sustain intimacy because sometimes you can start something with your partner and because of this because of that maybe argument or something like that it will fall off Uh, we've personally experienced that so um i think our biggest thing today will be talking to you guys about um different types of intimacy how to sustain the intimacy um learning your partner's intimacy type and then also um we're going to do our own exercise you know we kind of we really want to practice what we preach we don't want to just tell you guys oh you need to do this you need to do that we want to um incorporate them build our relationship up as well as assisting you guys with building your relationship up as um, a young marriage yes. or an older marriage you know if you're listening in welcome in y'all are welcome here too but you know intimacy and emotional connection is very very important and like she said you know in our in our youthfulness in our in our age group um there's not a lot of that there's not a lot of intimacy there's not a lot of emotional connection and some of that has to do with your age right some of them has to do with being young and not having that experience not really knowing how to connect with somebody maybe you came from a household where it wasn't that intimate between your parents or uh, you come from a household where there wasn't a lot of emotional connection with the parents or the children so that can really lead to that gap in that intimacy and that emotional connection that you later on in life have with your partner, you know? So that's really what we want to talk about today. That's the goal of today. And just getting into intimacy and emotional connection, right? There's different types of those connections. You have a physical connection. You have a, a intellectual connection. You have an experiential connection. And you have a, um, in, I said, physical um, emotional connection. That was the last one. And the emotional connection. So those are the four different types of connections that you can have with someone. And it ranges, right? You know, some people they lean heavily on the physical. Some people they live they lean heavily on the emotional. Um, me, I'm I'm a very um, physical and intellectual connector. I like to connect, you know, with with intellect, how smart you are, and uh, physically, like you know, hugs and and even the beauty of someone is something that connects me with them because in my in my mind, you know, there's a lot of things that we're human beings, right? And so you want to have healthy children, you know, you want to have a healthy mind and everything like that. So those are really big things that I connect with with my loved one is the intellectual side and the emotional side. And she'll tell you exactly what how she connects um, with me and how she connects just in general emotionally. But that's very important. But it's also important to build foundations Right. Because if you look at a house, what's the strongest part or what's the the most important part? That's the foundation. So when it comes to that intimacy and that emotional connection, the foundation is everything. Yeah. Um, I feel like. And I'm still I think that over time, this might change. Um, And over time, as we know, we change as people and our relationship changes as well. And the way that we prefer to connect will also change. So right now, um, in this stage of my life, I'm 25 years old and my biggest connector is um, intellectual and emotional. I'm really not a touchy feely girl. Um, I kind of just shy away from that just because we have um, different backgrounds. My mom didn't hug me like that my father was never around um my aunties and my uncles weren't very lovey in that way so um I read I really lack that feeling of needing that I think and something was the opposite because they don't get it or receive it they they yearn for it and that's, that's your biggest lean mm-hmm. um but for me because I didn't receive it I don't look for it um but I definitely lean on emotional. I really um, have to know that emotionally I'm safe with you. 
um, I have to know that emotionally you're in tune as a person because if you're not emotionally in tune, then you won't be able to realize or tell when I'm off, when I'm having a bad day, when um, I might need a little bit more affection here, a little bit more sturdiness there. You won't be able to tell. So that's really um, what makes me feel safe in a relationship. And then obviously the intellectual, I think that's where even the relationship between me and Adam, I think that's really where it started. It really started on an intellectual oh, yeah, definitely. basis. Um, we was sharing information. We started reading books together. We started um, sharing stories, sharing. Um, and, and I will add one spiritual connection. Oh, yes. Because that's not something that is defined yeah. in the connection, in the emotional that's connections and stuff like that. They, they don't say anything about the spiritual connection. But we definitely met on that intellectual and that spiritual connection. Yeah, definitely. For sure. We, you know, everybody don't really believe in outer body experiences. But our very first date, Adam and I experienced together an outer body experience. If y'all want to hear about that, um, definitely let us know. But this is a couple's relationship podcast, so we kind of want to stay on topic. But, um, you know, intellectually and spiritually, like Adam just said, that's really the biggest things that started the connection between us. And because those were the, those are our biggest points in our connector, our um, relationship connection, that's why that foundation was built almost immediately and it's been, you know, sturdy ever since. Yes. And, you know, like she was saying about how she was raised in a household where it really wasn't a lot of hugging and nurturing and that that man, that that aspect. I was a mother's child and I would always be right there on my mom's hip, hugging her, you know, saying I love you. She's saying I love you. So I got that physical connection I, that was fostered from a very young age in, in our household. You know, our parents didn't shy away from us as far as hugging us or, you know, telling kissing us on the forehead or something like that, tell, telling us that. You know, they loved us or singing to us, you know, stuff like that. So that's where that comes from. That's my foundation um, with the physical connection and intellectual connection. You know, I've always been an avid reader of books. My mom, she was a teacher. So the intellectual connection was also there from the inception. And so that's something that I've always carried into my relationships as I got older and now my marriage. And so it's that's why it's a really big thing for me. And like she said, the spiritual connection, right? And that's still something big for me right now because um, spiritually, we would not have made it as far as we have made it without that spiritual connection. We've done so much because of that spiritual connection and we will continue to do so much because of that spiritual connection, you know? Now, as far as the foundation goes, I will add this. There's some esoteric connections that people don't really talk about, right? Or they might do, but I feel like our financial connection and I, um, I also feel like the, um, the connection that we built with our family, growing our family, has been great connections that has helped us stay together, grow together, experience new things. And that's the experiential connection, right? Because we've traveled to different countries together, you know, and we've had some ups and we've had some downs together. So that's that experiential connection. But as far as financial connection, you know, we have businesses together. And um, we've watched some great podcasts. We've watched some great um, online shows. And they talked about how, you know, having that financial connection, those businesses amongst not just physical connection, not just emotional connection, that's something that helps string you and tie you together and keeps that relationship, can foster that relationship for a much longer period of time. You know, us having these businesses together, now we got to think together. We got to formulate. We got to calculate on a daily basis. And that gives us a connection that a lot of people don't have. A lot of people, a lot of partnerships and relationships, they don't have businesses together. They don't have even joint bank accounts. And that's something that we've always talked about from the beginning, having that joint bank account. We each wanted our own businesses. We wanted a business together. So that's a whole level of connection that we've had. And then, like I said, family, right? That's a whole nother connection too. Us having children together, having one mind and raising our children in a two parent household, because like she said, she didn't have her father in her household. And me, I, I, my mom met my stepfather and, you know, they were great together when I was three years old. And, you know, they married each other 
around when I was five or six years old. I was very young. I was there at the at the wedding, but I was very young. And um, you know, they've been together ever since. So I li I've been raised in a two parent household pretty much since I was born. And so having those different dynamics, right? Having those different backgrounds has helped push and pull us in these ways to lead to our longevity. We've only been married for a year, but I can see us definitely being married for five, 10, 20 years easily because we've already been through so many experiences, which is that experiential connection that has led to this point. Yeah. And we, um, you know, we're, we're, we want to give you guys this information, like I said, because we realize how important it is to have those connections and to go out and to um, search for different ways to connect with your partner. So talk to your partner, ask them if you don't already know. How do you like to connect? What is a way um, that I can connect with you that you prefer so that our relationship can become deeper? These are even conversations that Adam and I are having right now. This is not something that stops after you're married. This is not something that stops after even 30 years of marriage. You continue to create, to foster, to explore different avenues of connections with your partners because times change and so do people. So definitely take the time out to talk to your partner and figure them out. Feel yourself out as well. If you don't know yourself, your partner can never connect with you. Absolutely. Because you can't even connect with yourself. So And, and a big part of that is finding your happiness. Yeah. Listen, your partner can't make you happy. You need to find your happiness from within. Because as soon as your partner does one little thing that 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 drops them from that initial, because you know when you first meet somebody, you they're an angel. There's nothing they can't do wrong. But once that phase is gone, that puppy dog phase is gone. Now, if you relied on them for your happiness, you'll never be happy. Mm -hmm. So you must find your own happiness. And I was lucky enough, you know, it, it it's a lottery. I was lucky enough to find my happiness and know what makes me happy before I ever met my wife Mzadi. So I was already a happy person, a positive person going into our relationship. So that foundation, finding your own happiness is super, super important, family. Yeah, definitely. And don't be or feel discouraged if you haven't found that for yourself. Yes. Because just as Adam said, he was happy coming into a relationship. Um, initially, I was as well, but it faded very quickly after I got pregnant. Um, because when I met him, I had moved states. Um, and I was a happier person because I felt, you know, I tasted freedom. I had just, it was my first year in college. Um, and you know how it is, you know, for people that went to college for the first time, especially if you've moved out of state to go to college, you understand that feeling that ex of that new experience of that new you of trying to um, find and assert your identity outside of high school. So you know how it is. Um, and I was very, I was very much happy in a very positive state but after i got pregnant and i had to move back to um um arkansas and i went back to the toxic environment the toxic family um the toxic friends i soon 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 fell back into a depressive state and that lingered for a very long time because on top of that um normal depression just from life i also had experienced postpartum depression which many of us as women um experience but we don't know how to identify and so that just kind of catapult the um length of the depression but because of that we realized early on in our relationship the importance of connecting yes. and and like i said it's still a journey don't um think that we just have it all figured out we're we want to tell you guys that everything is a journey but you have to be willing to go on a journey and you have to be willing to um change for the better yes and and find the good within so that you can give that good without it's collaborating with your partner right it's listening to your partner it's connecting with your partner communication is key and they always say that about relationships i know it sounds cliche but communication is key fostering those emotional intellectual spiritual 
physical, experiential, financial, you know, there's more than four. Fostering those connections, that family connection, that is super, super important because you got to be able to level with each other, right? You got to be able to know each other's limits. You got to be able to know what somebody will take, what somebody won't take in a relationship. And that's just communication, having a clear line of communication with each other. And there, there's so many experiences that we've that we've had together that we've been through. Like she said, the postpartum depression of being married, our family growing up and how we have to deal with that. Uh, juggling finances, we're having being young, having children, you know, having our own place and trying to survive in the in a renter's atmosphere of America where you're renting and the nine to five lifestyle. There's so much that you have to juggle, have to go through t- while trying to build those connections in your relationship. So there's a lot of outside things that you have to focus on. But really, what's important is you and your partner. What's important is, is you and your partner communicating and facilitating an environment of growth where you can grow towards where you're trying to go. And that's another thing, right? Having that connection of knowing that, okay, this is what we want to grow to in the future. You know, that is big. That's super important. And I would say that's like a goal connection, right? Where you, where y'all can um, create goals together and chase after them because that's very important. And I wouldn't say these are distractions from the bad parts, the bad moments in your relationship, because you can learn a lot from the bad moments in your relationship. You learn who you are. You learn what you're willing to do or what you're willing to take, what you're willing to compromise about. So there's a lot for you to learn when it comes to, you know, the bad moments, too. And I always tell my wife, you know, we got to look at the bad situations that we go through, take the good from it and use that for the next experience. And we've done that. You know, we've, we've managed to move to a whole different country with our children you know, younger than younger than anybody that we know, you know, we're the youngest people here in our in this country that's that's doing what we're doing. We're the youngest ones here. So that really shows with all the connections that we made foster the experiences, good and bad that we've taken to grow. So, family, I hope that you've gotten some great information, some great tidbits from this episode, from what we've been talking about. And, you know, we practice what we preach. You know, we practice fostering those connections. So we want to um, play a little game with you guys that we play um, often. It's called Let's Get Deep. And this game is a really great game. It's a really good icebreaker game um, to start off conversation, start off that intimacy, that emotional connection, even that intellectual collection, uh, connection. And you might learn something new about your partner. So we'll only go through maybe about three cards of each um, selection. And in the selections, we have icebreaker cards. We have deep cards and deeper cards. So we're only going to go through three of each. And we're going to, you know, very short, um, give you guys a taste of a little game you can play to get that emotional connection, that conversation between you and your partner, just on some downtime whenever you have some started. So I'll go ahead and start with the icebreaker card. So first card is, what is your favorite day of the week? Hmm. Uh, my favorite day of the week will always be payday. Anytime <laughs> payday. I'm getting paid, that is my my best time. I feel electric. Okay. Yes. My uh my favorite day of the week, I would have to say, is the weekend. You know, just and that's just coming off of a nine to five lifestyle. We don't work anymore. Um, but we work for ourselves. We have our own business. But back, you know, when I was working in 95, nine to five, the first 29 years of my life, um, it was the weekend when usually you have your off days. And so I would definitely say the weekend for me. I'll let her go ahead and pull the icebreaker card. Um, okay. Uh, so I'll pull another icebreaker. We'll just go through all the icebreakers first. Would you rather your partner cook you a meal or pick up the groceries? Ooh. See, we did a live recently. <laughs> where I act that we asked this question. So if you've seen our live, then you saw the answer to this question and this did not change. <laughs> um, Adam cannot cook whatsoever. No, so I definitely would say pick up the groceries, but I wouldn't even say that because if you have a man like I do, he's never going to get the groceries right. I don't understand. I can send him with a list, literally, a list of the things that he needs to get at the grocery store 
back in America because here they don't have that. Yeah, here here here's a bit different. Yeah. I probably will definitely get what we need here. Yeah, because it's a it's a few essential things. Yeah, but in America, sending your man to the grocery store if you got a man like mine, he's not gonna get what you need. So you might as well go to the, get the groceries and cook. Okay, so our next icebreaker question is. Do you believe in any conspiracy theories? And, um, you know, everything is a conspiracy. My, this is my first answer. Everything is a conspiracy until proven true. So no matter what, like when they used to say back in the day, before they knew the earth was round, we used to say, oh, the earth is flat. Well, if you were to say back then that the earth was round, you were considered a conspiracy theorist. Until nowadays, it's proven true. So I think everyone believes in a conspiracy theory. Um, you know, none of us have been to space. Most of us haven't been to space. Most of us haven't been to the bottom of the ocean, you know, but we still say what's down there and what's up there, right? So would that be considered a conspiracy theory? So, you know, I, I would definitely say, yes, I do believe in um, many conspiracy theories as, as that logic goes, if you want to go by that logic. Yeah. How about you, babe? You didn't even answer the other question. I did. I, I, I said I would cook, definitely prefer for you. Oh, well, if I didn't, I would definitely prefer for her to cook because, she, like, I, like she said, I'm not the greatest cook. So if she cooks, then it's going to be good for sure. Um. Yeah, with the conspiracy one, I mean, me, I feel like mermaids are real. They are. I feel like aliens are real. They are. So, yeah, I'm a conspiracy girl. I'm, I'm, I'm there with it. And I feel like the government is going to um assimilate uh, a fake alien invasion and that's going to be the first attempt to start to control the population again it's a lot of stuff going on we can get into that but that's not what this episode is about but okay. yes i'm definitely a conspiracy girly now we're moving into the deep cards so between us who is better at keeping secrets i would definitely say me, me. Oh, are you no crazy? i would say me because she what? speaks she speaks her mind way more you but know, they don't have she speaks to... her mind way more than I do. And that's if they this don't... this question is between us, who is better no, at keeping secrets in I general? Mean, on a day on a daily basis, well, she speaks her mind way more than yeah. I do. So Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all let us know because why would me speaking my mind mean I can't keep a secret? That because that means that you can't keep your mouth closed. That's what that means. <laughs> that means that if if I want to say something, then I'm gonna say if I have something that I feel in my heart. And I'm just going to be real about whatever that is. Which means mean that you're going to have far concerned. less secrets because you're no. going to be telling people how you feel, how you think, what you think about somebody what? way more often. There's a lot of stuff. What's, what's, there's a lot of stuff about how I feel you, about people and stuff like that that I don't that's say. A secret. That's a secret. That's a secret. It, it's a small secret, but it is. Same thing. That's like they saying, okay, somebody tell you, oh, you know, I, maybe your, your friend, oh, I cheated on my wife. Would you keep that secret? What are you talking about? Me? If my friend cheated on their husband and they told me and they want me to keep it a secret, yes. Well, we're not gonna go into the cheating and all that stuff. That's character. That's more of a judge of character. Okay. So you know, okay. that's that's a little bit different. But that's but yeah, that's the secret. I definitely count um your ability to not vocalize every opinion you have as a, a realm of secrets. Wow. That's in that realm of secrets. Okay. Okay. And we we not encouraged to cheat, y'all. That was no, an example. You see, that's why I was like, no, nah, I'm it not was, going. That was an example. Okay, so next in the deep questions is, what do you think should be the legal drinking age? And I think if you're um, allowed to go to war and fight for your country, you should be able to drink. Yeah. I think that should be the legal drinking age. Yeah, that's that's all that is. And then, mm, yeah, I think that that's that I agree. Okay, so um, for our Dang, Adam, you next, ask all the questions? Uh, for our, for our next um, question section, which is deeper, I'm going to let her uh, start off and ask these questions. Okay, um, what is the most important trait in a friend? Why? I think the most important trait in a friend is loyalty. Yeah, you know, um, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. You know, not like Kendrick Lamar said. Not not love, not respect, not any of that. You know, I you need somebody that's loyal, that's not going to be talking behind your back when they go with another group of friends, or that's going to consider you when they want to go out and they want to have some time, you know, have fun or something like that. Or, you know, just, just even being able to confide in you and talk to you about certain things. You need a friend that's loyal more than anything mm -hmm. in my book. Yeah. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. That's the end of it. That's the beginning and the in-between. Because no matter what, 
if you have a person that's that's beside you that is loyal as a person, then they're going to be loyal to you. And that means that anytime y'all might have a disagreement, anytime y'all might not see eye to eye, anytime that person go out with a different friend group that they might have, you know, they're not um, going to push you to the side or sell your secrets to that person or that group of friends or they're not going to even maybe start a relationship and kick you to the curb just because they started a new relationship. They're still going to be loyal to you and figure out a good dynamic to, you know, have that intimate relationship with their man and then that intimate relationship with their friends. So loyalty at the end of the day, if you don't have loyalty, you don't have a friend. That's very true. So our very last question is going to be if I could role play any character in the bedroom, oh no, who would you like to see? What kind of question is that? Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know. If you could role play any character. If you uh, to me, if to you me. wanted me to role basically if you what kind of, what character do you want me to role play that you feel like is like a sexy character that you think I would I would play well, basically. Well, she's not a very good actor. Like I said, she, she, um, she, she has her, her feelings, emotions, and what she thinks right on her, on her mind. So any character that she try to act like, it'd still be Imzadi. Are you crazy? It still sound like her. She still act like her. I mean, so I I don't, I don't, I don't think that she'd be a great role player. Actually, we have. I don't think you would be a Actually, we have. We've gone to karaoke night at the, at the, at the bowling alley before. And I did great as far as no, renditions of the songs no, that I was didn't. doing, no. but that's just karaoke. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, He's just I don't. I don't really have any. I don't really have anybody for her. I'm not gonna lie. No, I'm not. I'm not embarrassed. I could. I, I mean, if know. I really had, and I'm just not the type of person I am either. Like I'm not. I don't care about you role playing in the bedroom. I don't know if I if I don't know if I wanted to role play. I probably would make him role play like I was like. Probably a Korean drama character. Yeah. And I'm not Korean. So, <laughs> so that would work. Yeah. I'll make you role play outside of the bedroom. Yeah, see. Yeah, that's what you need. But you my role play would be him becoming a billionaire and then taking me on luxury um outings. And that's already something we're planning in real life. So, so that's my role play right there. Oh, and yeah. that's gonna that's that's gonna lead me right to the bed. Come on now. I'm getting, so, I'm jumping so in. So thank you guys. You know, thank you for tuning in with us this episode. Thank you for listening. Um, and we love, you know, giving advice. And if you have questions, make sure you leave it down in the comments. And mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure we make sure, you know, both of us that we get back to you, that we respond to all the comments. So make sure you like, comment, and share. And make sure you have a wonderful day. Again, this is Young. Black. Uh, she meant melanated. Oh yeah, and Mary. My bad, my bad. We, <laughs> we, we had to change the name, you guys, because somebody already had the um our name. Yes. Like, if you've been sticking around um since our very first episodes, you noticed that it changed from Young Black and Mary to Young Melanated and Mary. So um that's the reason. But yes, we're we're Young Melanated Mary. Yes. And we hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.